This is a rotary evaporator. We use it to evaporate solvents from reactions. We do it by putting our mixture to be evaporated in a round bottom flask and we fill the flask no more than one half to two thirds full so that as evaporation occurs and expansion occurs in the round bottom flask that it's not as likely to bump into, boil into the rotary evaporator. If it does, we do have a bump guard present and any solution that bumps out of the round bottom flask should be collected in the bump guard. If that happens to you and you need some assistance recovering your product from the bump guard, please just ask for help. The cork rings are very handy for holding the round bottom flasks, so I encourage you to grab a cork ring from your drawer. Looking at the features of the rotary evaporator, there are two knobs in the front. One controls spinning, we'll put that into action in a few minutes, and one controls the temperature of a hot water bath. There are two valves on the rotary evaporator that help control the vacuum. The upper valve should not be turned. It actually is open to our vacuum pump and should remain that way. The lower valve we'll need to use to open and close the system to vacuum. When this knob is vertical, it is open to the atmosphere and air can get into the rotary evaporator. When it is closed or horizontal, then the vacuum pump can pull a vacuum on the rotary evaporator. Another important feature of the rotary evaporator is the use of a Keck clip. This is simply a plastic clip and you'll notice that one side is a little bit larger than the other. The small side facing the camera now should be clipped onto the bump guard or the male joint when connecting ground glass joint wear and the larger piece should go onto the round bottom flask or the female joint. Before using a cat clip, it's always good to check the plastic bridges and make sure that there are not any cracks in the cat clip. If there are, simply throw the clip away and ask for a replacement. To secure a round bottom flask to the rotary evaporator, simply remove the stopper, place the round bottom flask on the bump guard and do not let go until the cat clip is secure. I will put the smaller portion of the cat clip on the bump guard and a larger portion on the round bottom flask and it should clip into place. You're welcome to give the round bottom a little bit of a tug to make sure that it is secure. Before starting rotary evaporation, I want to make sure that my cold finger is packed to the top with dry ice so that any evaporating solvent from the rotary evaporator hits the cold condenser and the distillate collects into the trap on the other side of the rotary evaporator. To get started, I'm going to adjust the spin knob so that my flask is rotating at its fastest setting. After that, I will turn on the vacuum pump, which is my source of vacuum for the rotary evaporator. The vacuum reduces the pressure in the rotobat, reducing the pressure reduces the boiling point. And then when the vacuum pump is on, I will close off the vacuum release valve. I'll start with it open, and when I turn on the pump, I should hear a hissing sound where air is being sucked in through this valve. And I'll close it off and the hissing will stop. This will be loud, so I'm going to give the pump a little bit of time to pump down. And then I'll come back and explain some more. Flipping on the pump and closing the vacuum valve. After a minute or so under vacuum, I will begin to see solvent dripping off of the cold finger as it's doing now. I may also see boiling in the round bottom flask. It turns out I do not see that right now, but that's often the case that you will see boiling. If I stop the spin, I would absolutely see big bubbles of gas forming in the round bottom flask. I know the evaporation process is working as I see a lot of solvent condensing on the cold finger and dripping into the trap. Now on a humid day, you can actually see ice forming on the edge of the round bottom flask and I can see condensate on the round bottom flask now. That's because evaporation requires heat and so the heat that is in the flask is being removed as liquid is being converted into a gas and as such the remaining contents of the flask are getting very cold. That's why we have a heat bath. To lower the flask into the heat bath, I simply push down on this knob and slide it to the left. I want to be careful in this process 
not to lower the neck of the round bottom flask below the water level in the water bath. The system, after all, is under vacuum, and it would be possible to suck water into the round bottom flask if there were not a good seal between the round bottom flask and the bump guard. When you think evaporation may be complete, you can lift your flask up out of the water bath and take a look. It's usually easy to tell whether or not evaporation is complete if you stop this, the rotation. And what I usually do is allow the flask to sit still for about 10 or 15 seconds and I look for boiling in the flask. If I don't see boiling, I will begin to rotate slowly and look for evidence of evaporation of material out of the round bottom flask. In my case, I'm getting condensate on the round bottom flask, which tells me I'm absolutely not finished with the evaporation process. When evaporation is complete, certainly you will have a slowing of the drip from the cold finger, but it may not stop entirely because the trap is also under vacuum and you can get evaporation from the trap back up to the cold finger and get a reflux process there. When you've determined that evaporation is complete, stop the rotation and vent to atmosphere. After venting the system to atmosphere, I then turn off the pump and for, I don't know if you can hear it on the video, but there was quite a bit of hissing as the pressure equilibrated within the rotary evaporator. Once the pressure has equilibrated to atmospheric pressure, I can then move, remove the round bottom flask. I simply hold the flask with one hand and I pull the cat clip off with the other. It's best to grab both sides of the cat clip and pull away and then remove the round bottom flask. So as a matter of repeat, to put the round bottom flask on the rotary evaporator, you put it on the bump bar, clip it with a Keck clip, turn your spin on high, turn on the vacuum pump, and then close the vacuum release valve. You reverse that to get it off. You first vent to atmosphere, turn off the pump, turn off the spin, and remove the flask. If you are using the Rotovac properly, then evaporation should begin within just a minute or two of placing the round bottom flask on the rotary evaporator. If evaporation is, does not begin within a minute or two, check to see if your vacuum pump is on, check to see if you've closed the vacuum release valve so that the system is indeed under the vacuum provided by the pump. If you're still having trouble, ask a TA for assistance.